Welcome to your fifth lesson in web design. In this project, we're going to build a contact us page in which the user or visitor of the web page can fill out a form and we will be able to respond to their input by displaying uh, back some information that says thank you for contacting us and we're going to send an email from our web page to our email box. So uh, this is what our web page is going to look like and eventually once we click submit we're going to drop an email into this uh, mailbox right here. So let's go ahead and fill out the form. It asks for our first name, last name, email address, and we can select one of these buttons right here, and we can put something in here. I'll just say hello world. And then I'm going to click send. Now as the page is processing this, it looks at all the things that were collected in that form. For instance, my name, my email address, and that I wanted to contact customer service. And over here, an email has arrived with the information from myself. So it takes a lot to get all this put together. And basically, this web page, if I go ahead and click on my home button right here, runs on another uh, programming language that's used on the web called PHP. So we're going to be building an Aptana project that is a PHP project. And I'm going to show you how to set up a uh, local server so that you can run PHP web pages. To begin this project, simply open up Aptana, and in the upper left-hand corner, we're going to click on the Quick Launch menu, and we're going to select PHP Project. This is different from what we've done up to this point, so please make a note that this is a PHP project, not a web project. So select that, and we're going to name it Lesson 5. And I've already created a Lesson 5 to show you the how it's going to look at the end. So I don't want to overwrite that. I'm going to click Cancel, you click Finish. And that way I can retain my original files. All right, so in here, we're going to create our first file. So in this Quick Launch menu, I'm going to select File. And I'm going to name it index.html. And then I'm going to click Finish. Now we're going to leave this blank for now because we're going to use a framework called w3.css to jumpstart our project. So we introduced these frameworks and libraries in the previous lesson, in lesson four on enhancing a web page. So a new one here is called w3.css and it allows us to build faster and better responsive websites. Responsive basically means that it's going to be written to be on a mobile device first, but then can expand out to be on larger devices like a PC or a laptop. So um, if I were to scroll down on this page here a little bit, which by the way, to get, to get here, you can simply go to w3schools.com and click on learn w3.css, and it takes you to the same page. Now, the example that they give down here, right here, if I click Try It Yourself, is that with simply linking to their library of CSS right here, you can write your HTML, and then how you want to style it has already been figured out. So, for instance, if I want my whole page to be within a single container, then I just need to say single container. And uh, that would be a single column page. But in this case, they've wrapped an H1 in this container and they've made it teal in color. So that's the top bar that you see here. Then they put a image underneath that. and You can see that they, uh, they're stacking this up inside this container. And then they put another container down here, which is this which puts in like a little foot footnote here underneath the car. And then they finish up here with a footer that is also inside of a container that is teal. So it's super easy to put all this together. And you don't have to actually write any CSS, but you do need to know what classes to put in here. So that's what we're going to explore in here to jumpstart our project. 
So over here on the left, all of these categories represent categories of the classes that we can use to plug into these. So if we put a button on the web page, here's how we can style all the buttons so that they are khaki or yellow or orange or red. And all we have to, do, all we have to really do is borrow this code right there. So this is how we use their CSS. We just refer to the class and we pick what we want. And there's all kinds of things that we can do to the buttons. There's also ways to style uh, alerts or text itself, uh, even choose different containers. And we'll be exploring that by example here in a little bit. But to get going with our web page, we need to click on W3 dot CSS examples and that's going to take us to a page of fully built web pages and for instance uh, there's this blog example um, there's this photo gallery example and you can demonstrate those by clicking on these let me click on the on the blog one and you can see that this one is really well built uh, and it's also responsive which means it's going to adapt to the size of the device it's viewing it on. Uh, we might as well look at another one. We'll look at that one right here, the demo website. So everything that you see here can be done by using their CSS frameworks. It's a very good looking website. We're going to make ours pretty simple. So the one that I want you to use here is the demo login page. So if I click on this, you can see it looks very similar to what we had. Of course, we customized ours with our school colors. So uh, let's we go ahead and close this and click on View Source. And basically what you need to do is just copy all of this right here. All right, so let's just go ahead and copy this. And this is going to jumpstart our project. So let's go ahead and paste this into our index.html and then click Source and then click Format. Okay, so if we go ahead and save this, and we click our little preview button right there, here's what it looks like right now. And you can see there's a couple of problems, like for instance, it doesn't know what that is right there, but we're going to fix all that in a second. Okay, so the one thing that I'd like to do here is start off by adding a head section. Alright, so let's go ahead and say this is the head section. And the first thing in the head section is the meta tag that says what character set we're using. In this case, we're going to use UTF-8. Right. And next, we're going to move all of that stuff that you see right here, the title, this meta tag, and the link up into the head section. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to tab it over. And we might as well put the meta tags together right there. All right, so this is no longer uh, the demo page. So let's change the title to Lesson 5. And let's go ahead and save that. All right, in this section right here, we're going to make a, a link that is going to display a little house, indicating that's the home button. And let's change this to say MHS Web Designers. And click Save. Now, if I go ahead and click in, uh, the preview button right here, you can see that um, it displays this. Uh, but since this is only going to be a little two-page website, we're going to click. Uh, we'll put a little home button right here, so that when we go from our form to our thank you page, uh, we can get back to this page. So, uh, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take that out right there. And we're going to put in a link. And this link right here is going to refer to itself. So the href is going to be index.html. And now we need to put an icon in here. So let's go look up how to do that. So let's just pretend right now that we don't know how to put an icon in here. Well, we're going to go over to the framework. And we can close this. And we're going to click on icons. So w3.css icons, that category right here. And just as I described before, we, we basically want this little home button right here. So let's go ahead and copy that right here. And how do we use this? Well, uh, it provides an example right here. We have to put it inside of an i tag. 
All right, so this little I right here with a class, and then we're going to replace that. But there are others, by the way. The ones that you see that begin with FA are font awesome icons. But there's also the Google material design icons, very similar down here, and they have a whole library of them. You can always click on these links here to find the master list, which is pretty extensive. Let's just do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and open that up in a new uh, link. And actually, these are just more of the same. I'm going to Google it right now. So font awesome. If we go to font awesome, here it is. And if I click on all icons, you can scroll through all of these. You can see, you can see that there's, there's an awful lot of them. I kind of introduced this a little bit in the previous video. And now we're actually going to put them to good use. Uh, Bootstrap is another one that should be on here as well. And Bootstrap has a ton of icons just like this as well. So they all work pretty much the same. We need to put in uh, basically something like this. Let me copy this one more time. And let's go ahead and plug this into our web page. So in between the opening and closing A tags, we're going to put this. And actually, I didn't want the cloud. I wanted the home. All right, so to get that, we could put in home because that would be the bootstrap library. But I said we were going to use font awesome. So I want that right here. All right, so right here, we're going to put in this font awesome fa-home. Now, just doing this is not going to be enough. We also have to reference the library. So if I click on preview, you'll notice that no icon shows up. And that's because we haven't put in the link up here to that library. So that is located right here. All right, so if I can borrow this out of their little example page, this is their style sheet to font awesome. You'll see it right there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and copy that and plug that into our web page. Put that right there and click Save. Now if I click on the preview, I should see the little Home button right there. OK, so next up, let's make this a little bit larger. The other thing that this thing does is it scales without pixelating. In other words, it doesn't get blurry or anything. This is a vector graphic. So uh, let's go ahead and change that. So we're going to use a span tag to do that. And the way that we can do this is we need to look up how to um, make text larger. So we're going to eventually put the class in here. So the class equals something at this point. And let's go look up typography. All right, so typography, this is the text section. And uh, here, we basically want to do like a large. All right, so how do we make extra large? We make it like this. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And if I want large text, then I put that in here like this, extra large. I'm going to close this span, but I want to wrap that house in it. All right, so I'm going to move that closing tag to here. I suppose I could put this on a separate line here to make it a little bit more readable. Indent that. And let's preview it. All right, so you can see the house got larger right here. OK, the other thing we might want to do is change this background so the background is red and matches our school colors. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the framework again under colors. All right, so it looks like to make red, they have that right at the top. Let's go ahead and copy W3-red and make a class for that. All right, so let me go ahead and oh, getting lost in my own list of pop-ups here. All right, so let's go ahead and add uh, the class up here to this. Instead of teal, we're making it red. All right, let's go ahead and preview. And here we just change that stripe at the, at the top of the page to red. All right, next up, let's go ahead and change this form. I think I'm going to move this preview over to the side here so we can see it as we build it. And the first thing that 
we want to show up here is we don't want it to say login anymore. We want it to say contact us. All right, so let's go ahead and change what it says right here to contact us, exclamation point, save it, and that pops up in there. The other thing that we're going to want to do is right after it says form class, and then this is basically saying that we want uh, the form to be in its own container, and it's going to be about four wide. It's four columns wide out of 12. We're going to add these two things. We're going to add action equals thank underscore you dot php. So this is the second page we're going to make in a little bit. And when this form is submitted, it'll go to this page. And when it goes to that page, it's going to send information to it as we're transitioning from this page to the next page. And that method is called post. So this just basically is saying send all the information of this form to that thank you page for processing. And I think I'll shrink this down so you can see it a little bit better. And slide this over. I suppose I can move this this way. Now we can see the full page. Okay, so now it says contact us at the top. And what we want to now, now change is these groups. Now I can add a little bit of space between each of these divs to kind of show you what the difference is. And the first one we want to change to be first name. All right, so that'll be this. Let me save it and you'll see that pop up in here. And the second one is going to be last name. Save it. And that pops in there. Now the style of this is underlined by default. Let's go ahead and see what else we can do to these text boxes to change the way that they're styled. So if I go back to the framework web page and where we want to go here is we're working with the input. All right, so that's this right here. This category, if I click on that, you can see, oh, I can put a border around these boxes. I can change the text color. Um, eventually we're going to add these buttons over here as well. So if you scroll down this page, there's a ton of things that we can do. And the one that we're going to borrow from is this one right here. We're going to change the interior color. And we're going to, uh, as you change the focus of it, you'll see the focus goes into uh, a blue border right there. So we can go ahead and take and copy those two lines right here and paste those in right here. Or actually, the first name is right here. I should tab that in. And I grabbed the paragraph tag. It did not mean to do that. Save that. And here you can see that pop in right there when I click Save. Let me grab last name as well. And this time I'm not going to grab that paragraph tag. And the reason why is because we're containing these in these groupings. All right, I think that's the preferred way to do it, is to maintain these groups. And that'll take care of last name. Another thing that we need to put into these text boxes as we build it is the name attribute. And the name attribute can go in right here. So name equals, and then we get to decide what we want to nickname the information that's being stored in these text boxes. So I'm just going to nickname it first name because that's basically what the information represents. But we could call it anything we want. So this first name is going to refer to the information that gets posted to our thank you page. So whatever they happen to type in this text box, whether it's their first name or not, is going to be nicknamed first name. And then we can access that on the other page using that name. And same thing here. So we're going to say this name of the input here is going to be last name. And that refers to whatever text is typed into this text box. So now I'm going to go ahead and just copy this group right here, and I'm going to make another grouping beneath it for our email. 
So this text box is going to ask the user to type in their email. And we'll name this email as well. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. So now you can see a third text box. All right, let's go ahead and eliminate these uh, radio buttons here and that checkbox. So you can see this one's the radio button, there's the second one, and there's the checkbox. So let's just go ahead and get rid of these right there. And in their place, we're going to put our own radio buttons. Now to speed things along a little bit, I'm just going to go ahead and paste this in. We already know that we're basically creating a div that says this is a group. And in this group, we're going to put all of these other inputs. And in this case, let me go ahead and shrink this sidebar down. These inputs are going to be what's called a radio button. So the type now is radio instead of text. So the input boxes that we had up here were text boxes because their type was text. But in this case, we're telling the browser we want a radio button. So it's going to make this little circle that can be either filled in or not filled in. Now by giving them all the same name, notice how the name property is department for this one, and this one's also department, and this is, this is department. This groups them together. Only one of these can be the highlighted one. And the value being stored this is going to get passed over to our PHP as well whenever this form gets posted by clicking the submit button and it's going to be sent over to this page. So in addition to knowing the name, I also will be able to get the value here as well of these. So I'm going to go ahead and click save and you'll see our radio buttons pop in. Another attribute here was checked. So checked is an attribute that if I take it out, obviously, this box is not filled in. And when I put it back in there, it will be. And that will set a default uh, radio button for when this form is posted. That way, we're guaranteed to have a value that nothing was unselected. All right, next we need a text area. All right, so let's go ahead and make another div and it's going to be another group so even though there's only going to be one thing in it and I'm going to go ahead and save that now I'm just going to paste in that text area and a text area is a multi-line text box we've been using the same class in the other text boxes so this is something that is up here and you can see it again up here and one more time in the email box. So basically we want the same color, background, uh, and border in this text area. And then we give it a name so that when we post this we can get the information out of it and we can refer to whatever information is typed into it as message. And placeholder will act as a watermark. So it'll say enter your message here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and you'll see it pop in over here. Now you won't be able to see the watermark necessarily. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. Uh, and that's because of text area. If there's a line break in here, if it thinks there's one, then uh, it won't preview well. But you'll see it in the browser. So if I go over here and I just refresh, here it pops in and you can see the watermark right there. That That's the placeholder. It says enter your message here, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so now that we've got everything in the form, uh, we need to do some stylistic changes. For instance, we want this text color to match these text colors and the button as well. So uh, here, we're just going to change theme to brown and contact us. The theme needs to change to brown. And then I'm going to save it and that'll complete the theme here so everything else in here is kind of that sandy brown color lastly the button down at the bottom of the page still says login so we need to change that and right here on line 57 I'm going to change it to send message and I'm going to put a space after that and let's put an icon right next to it just like we put the home button at the top of the page up here so uh, we got those icons from font awesome 
let's go ahead and open up our web browser and go to Font Awesome. So if I just Google Font Awesome, it is the first result. It's fontawesome.github. So when I go here, you'll see this web page. Click on the icons category, and then we're going to scroll down to this search box. And the icon that I'm looking for is a send icon. So here is a symbol that uh, pops up for it. We'll use the paper airplane. It actually comes in two varieties. We could use this one or this one. I'll use the closed one. And we're going to need basically that right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to go back to Aptana and just paste it in right next to my send message. And I do have that space in between right there. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And here you'll see it pop in. Finally, to finish up the button, we're going to add one more attribute to it. So the attribute is going to be its type. And the value of its type will be a submit button. So um, as I put in the double quotes, it gives me a pop-up of three different values and select submit. And save your HTML file. Before we begin the PHP portion of this project, I'd like you to review what we've done in part one by completing the lesson five part one video quiz. Following the video quiz, you're going to install the environment that will actually run the PHP, and the download is a pretty big file. So you can get the download started before you start the part two video by clicking this link right here. It says XAMP Installer. It'll take you to this web page. And for your MacBook, you can click on this button right here, and that'll start the download for you. Or if you're downloading on one of our PCs in the computer lab, or your own PC for that matter, you can click on this link right here. And then you're ready to start part two.